Very good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. We will look at the stratosphere, but before we get there, we are going to look at the Madden Julian oscillation rotating through phases one into two, and at, in an amplified form at the moment, that is correlating quite nicely to some of the longer term model runs. This is the GEFS, this is the extended and the upcoming seven day period. So this is looking globally. And what we essentially see with a strong phase one into two of the MJO, it correlates to higher pressure over Iceland, lower pressure over, over Europe, less settled, especially across the southern half of the British Isles. So with higher pressure building to the north, it then tends to not only force the jet further south, but it also weakens it as well. And uh, there is quite a nice correlation here to the GEFS extended. This is the upcoming seven day period. So this takes us into the first uh, few days of January. We've got the negative here extending from the central North Atlantic across the UK and Ireland into western portions of Europe here. But bear in mind what I just showed you with regards to that one and two of the MJO. If we play through this animation, this is the 500 millibar geo potential height anomalies, you notice something takes place over the North Atlantic and over the North Pacific. So this is the North Pacific here with the negative extending from the Bering Sea down towards the western side of uh, the United States here, California in particular, and also the UK also. Now, we've got the negative eastern United States extending further south with higher pressure over the North Atlantic and Greenland, we've got the deep trough extending from eastern North America to the western side of Europe. As we continue to play through this animation, there is a couple of things that take place. We start to lose the negative over the North Pacific. That indicates that we're slowing down the jet stream over the Pacific Ocean. We're also seeing heights building over the North Atlantic and into Greenland here with a weakening of the negatives underneath that ridge. So what is happening here is we're forcing the storm track further south with height rises, specifically over Iceland and the southeast of Greenland here. And that correlates very nicely with the phase one in the two and what you would expect to see taking place with the teleconnection. So higher pressure over Iceland, lower pressure, forced further south over western europe and that is a colder theme so remember what was said a way back during the final 10 days of november with the mjo rotating through phases one and two we had higher pressure to the west northwest of the uk and ireland we had the cold spell final days of november into the first 10 days of december then the mjo rotated into phases three four five and six that then allowed the milder conditions a firing up the jet stream and the uh, temperatures to really significantly warm. That happened over North America, it happened over Western Europe. But now we're seeing the MJO rotating back to the same phases that delivered the cold phase in the first place as we move between the period of day 11 through 18. So this is Sunday the 7th and the 14th of January here and that is correlating very nicely. Is it an outstandingly cold pattern? Well, not necessarily, but a colder pattern nonetheless, and this coincides very nicely with the winter forecast here. I did see wise what one wise comment indicating, yeah, you keep mentioning two weeks down the road, as if to say that I'm pushing whatever I'm saying further back. In fact, this cold spell if it happens, and I say a moderate cold spell, but it has the potential to become colder than a moderate spell, what it's actually coinciding very nicely with the longer term theme that I've got going. And if you add in the SSW and the potential that has, it's actually pushed further back towards the end of uh, January into the early portions of February. So if you go back, the winter forecast is in right, and you can go and re re refer back to that if you want. But folks, this is turning out quite well, and expected to turn out the way it is looking, certainly by the models, based on the MJO. 
it's behaving as what was expected and we'll wait and see what happens with regards to the uh, the post new year period how cold does the pattern get based on the mjo and then how cold does the pattern get based on the potential sudden stratospheric warming later down the road still a lot of ifs but and buts and babies but that is part of forecasting and uh, i'm personally speaking i am very pleased with how this pattern is evolving and then as we continue to play through the loop so you see here for the 7th through the 14th of january we've got higher pressure over the north pacific that means that we've not got a strong jet stream ripping across the pacific in the north america flooding north america with mild pacific herb we've got quite the opposite the jet is forced further north it then allows the deepening of the trough over the central and eastern united states so arctic air is getting pushed south into the eastern united states we've also got the build-up of pressure iceland greenland forces the storm track further south and allows the potential for colder weather into the western side of europe here and that folks is without the ssw being even mentioned the ssw is a still a possibility but with a high likelihood of happening there's no guarantee with that and even if we do see the ssw developing sometime during the week first week to 10 days of january we still have to wait 10 to 14 days for a, a, a stratosphere in the tropospheric response so what actually is the ssw what does it actually mean when you increase the warming over the polar stratosphere here remember that there's two different layers the troposphere is very different to the stratosphere but what happens is when you rapidly warm the upper levels of the stratosphere that increases the depth of the stratosphere it then forces the troposphere which is a layer underneath that to then contract as it contracts it then forces the height rises to develop at 500 millibars or 18,000 feet above our heads it all takes time to then propagate that energy that response within the upper levels of the atmosphere it all takes time to then move down through the atmosphere and that hence why it takes 10 to 14 days to see some sort of response now remember not every ssw or sun stratospheric warming leads to cold weather over the eastern us western portions of europe i believe 70 percent of all ssws or sun stratospheric warmings lead to cold weather over the the western side of europe here so the time frame is important to look at i think the mjo in an active phase in in phases one moving into phases two will help deliver a cold spell during the first half of january and then do we see the ssw if it happens again it's all if smut and buts and maybes if it happens does that hand off to the cold later in january and particularly into the early portions of february this is the big question mjo versus the ssw can the mjo hand off to the ssw because there is a possibility that the mjo moves into warmer phases but by that stage the ssw may have already kicked in delivering the cold to eastern north america and western portions of europe here sorry if it's technical sorry if it's not talking about the uk and the ireland specifically but this channel is based on trying to show you the big picture the reasons behind why we see certain types of weather here in the uk ireland and western portions of europe trying to show you all that's going on i think you can agree that we've entered a fight a battle between warm versus cold over the uk ireland as we move through the christmas to new year period that's happening we've seen that with storm garrett delivering heavy snowfall the first real disruptive snow of the season for high elevations of northern england and in the scotland here we've got another threat of significant snow as we move through early portions of saturday then we've got more threats of snow as we move into the early portions of next week and that has got nothing to do with what's going on within the stratosphere so as we play through the extended you continue to see the higher pressure over the north atlantic and over greenland here that is a negative nao signal 
And if we look at that here, the Arctic Oscillation, let's get to the Arctic Oscillation real quick, and I'll show you what the latest one of the GFS is indicating here. So there you go. There's the negative Arctic Oscillation expected. So it goes into deep negative territory, minus two, possibly minus three sigma below the uh, neutral line. The North Atlantic Oscillation two is expected to go into negative territory here and that folks is a, a portion of the mjo and that is exactly what i've been saying it went into the warm phases so we had the dip late november early december we've seen the cold spell then it was very very much expected that it would go back into firm positive territory that happened we've seen the recovery in the temperature warm wet december was forecasted here on the channel and now it's expected to go the week between christmas and new year to go back negative once again and then the question is does the stratosphere do the business with regards to the cold pattern so very very interesting times to come speaking about the polar stratosphere let's see what's happening here's the initial 10 millibars you can see the warming taking place across Eurasia. We've got, still got the core of the polar vortex centered to our side of the pole, hence why we're still seeing uh, nacreous clouds, polar stratospheric clouds. Skip ahead to a week from now at 10 millibars. You can see the strong warming now showing up um, and pushing towards the polar region. Within the core of the polar vortex, we're still seeing temperatures in the mid minus 80s below freezing here, so bitterly cold conditions. And still at displacement 10 days from now you can see the continuation of that warming moving more over towards the pole the question is do we see a split in the vortex and do we see a reversal in the mean zonal winds at 60 degrees north these are all questions that still need to be asked and then as we move towards uh, the latter half of the run uh, at 10 millibars you can see that warming continuing to spread over top of the pole here looking at snow projections here over the next few days this is off the ecmwf and you can see if we look at the uk in particular what is it indicating with regards to snow projections here so uh, this is a uh, during the course of today we've got the snow over the high elevation still you can see over the next uh, few days we've got uh, a new system moving in during the course of saturday that is going to increase the potential of snow even western portions of northern ireland northwestern portions of ireland also but it needs to be within elevation low levels will see heavy rainfall but notice the ecm model is indicating high elevation snow in northern england and much of scotland above 100 meters so we may see more trouble in high road routes m74 across the high elevations of the m8 for example we may see some issues with snow the a66 cumbria into uh, northumberland and then as we move into the southern uplands higher parts of the central highlands uh, will see significant amounts of snow as we progress through the course of saturday then as we move into the early portions of next week the ecmwf still has snow prospects over all here this is by the time we reach the end of week one of january we've got uh, some fairly decent snowfall but it's largely high elevation snow as we've got this battle between warm and cold Looking at the overview chart here, back to the here and now, we've got an area of low pressure that then moves through. Northerly winds, chilly feel, nothing particularly cold to write home about. Then as we move uh, through the course of uh, Saturday, Friday into Saturday here, we've got that area of low pressure over the North Sea. Uh, we've got a bit of a break in between widespread frosty conditions to start uh, the early portions of Saturday. Then this deep area of low pressure that may be named by the Met Arian then moves in we've got the band of heavy precipitation turning uh, over the snow with any elevation we could see some significant wind rain snow with that uh, system then that clears out and as we move through the latter half of uh, Hogmanay in the new year itself we've got clear skies light winds across the north showers blustery conditions across Ireland Northern Ireland England Wales further north clear skies we are going to see a cold and frosty start to the new year lots going on keep it right here in the channel like share and subscribe and i'll see you with more details on the weather in the coming days in tomorrow's video thanks for watching enjoy the rest of your
for uh, Thursday evening, bye for